going beyond the headlines. Asking the questions you want answered. Exploring government policies and how they impact you. We are delving deeper. Good evening and welcome to Delving Deeper. I am Sonalala filling in for Ayana Carter. Joining us this evening is Mr. Marvin Gonzalez, the Minister of Public Utilities. Good evening, Mr. Gonzalez, and welcome to Delving Deeper. Thank you very much, Sunil. It's always a pleasure to appear on an episode on Delving Deeper to speak to the people of Trinidad and Tobago on what is happening in the utility sector. Now, Minister, a couple of weeks ago, we saw a significant portion of the population uh, was left without a water supply due to uh, issues at the Kearney Water Treatment Plant and the Salcott. Uh, operations have since resumed at the facility, but can you tell us, uh, have you received a, a final comprehensive report on what exactly took place and possible recommendations? So every single day, um, and perhaps twice or three times per day, I get a report and update from the management of the Water and Sewage Authority as well as the, the Board of Commissioners. They monitor the situation on a everyday basis because it is water impacting significant portions of the population. The Karani Water Treatment Plant, just to put it in context, produces 75 million gallons of water per day. 35 million gallons of that water is distributed to North Trinidad, parts of North Trinidad, and uh, 40 million gallons um, is distributed to Central and South Trinidad. So you're talking about thousands of customers being serviced by the Karani Water Treatment Plant. In addition to that, the Desalcott plant is a contracted company and it, WASA is a, is a customer of Desalcott and WASA is obligated, or rather the Desalcott plant is obligated contractually to provide the Water and Sewage Authority with 40 million gallons of water per day for its industrial and commercial customers in central Trinidad as well as the domestic customers. So 15 million gallons of Desal water go towards servicing the industrial and commercial customers and um, approximately 25 million gallons um, they go towards servicing the domestic customers so it is supplementing the water shortfall in central and south trinidad so those two plants one producing 75 million gallons of water which is a carrying water treatment plant and the desalcott plant producing 40 million gallons of water to wasa so that it can meet the obligations and the requirements of its customers domestic uh, industrial and commercial. So any disruption that takes place at those facilities, it will inevitably result in widespread disruption to customers, be it in North Trinidad, Central and South Trinidad. So any disruption that is taking place there, it requires that urgent attention at the level of the board, the level of management, as well as the Ministry of Public Utilities to ensure that this disruption is mitigated as far as possible so as not to cause inconvenience to the customers who are serviced by these water, by the two water processing plants. Now, as the plant is restored to um, near full capacity, um, it, it is allowing the authority to be able to meet some of the supplies in the affected area. Unfortunately, there are some areas that have not yet received um, their a normalization in their water supply. And um, over the coming days, the Water and Sewage Authority will be putting more focus in those areas to ensure the vast majority of areas, thankfully, have received their supply of water, but there are pockets of areas in Central and South Trinidad where um, the Water and Sewage Authority in the ensuing days will be putting a lot of focus to ensure that the people and the residents who live there, they, they get their supply of water. So, for example, areas uh, competed would be the San Francisco, Sunrise Road, and Pinal Rock Road. And later this, this week, Quarry Village, Separia, the Gans Village, and Antilly Streets should have their supply. And um, Williamsville generally competed with the exception of Eccles Village, the high points of Eccles Village. And in Princess Town, I'm told it is successful with the exception 
to a realized road and Kunjal to be completed by tomorrow. Some pockets were unsuccessful, for example, in Mayaro, Kunahan, Kaskadu, Bigorat, and Mafeking. And in those areas, uh, Wasa is supplementing the shortfall by providing a truck-borne supply of water to some of these residents, especially in the coming week. So a lot is happening in the background where areas that we have not supply water, um, supply water they, they, they are utilizing the truck-borne service to provide water to some of these communities. Whenever there's a disruption in the water supply, WASA is expected to provide a truck-borne water service. Realistically speaking, how many customers can WASA deliver to on a given day? And are we currently meeting that target? So that's a very good question because currently WASA has about 36 tankers available to provide a truck-borne supply of water to citizens, especially when it cannot provide a pipe-borne supply as a result of disruptions that tend to take place on a regular basis. It could be a pump going down, a booster station going down, fluctuation in electricity, um, electrical outage. All of these things contribute to um, customers their, and their water supply being negatively impacted. Now, depending on the level of the disruption, it can put, it can put the utility company at great strains to meet the, the demands for truck one supply. So for example, the recent um, disruption that we've experienced at the DeSalcott facility and at the Karani water treatment um, plant facility, which resulted in over 80,000 customers of WASA being impacted with 36 truck or tankers. You certainly cannot provide 80,000 um, customers with a truck one supply of water. And the utility company is also grappling with providing some of our key institutions, public institutions with a supply of water. So the, this, the, the last disruption, for example, at the Disalcourt facility took place on the weekend prior to the opening of school, which is on a Monday. So schools in Central and South Trinidad were at risk of not being able to open because of no water supply. So Wasser now had to prioritize how it is going to supply many of its customers um, uh, you know, as a result of that disruption. So because of the, the imminent opening of school on that Monday, WASA had to focus on ensuring that all of our schools are properly supplied with water so that we do not have a disruption in the education system as a result of that Salcott shutdown on the Monday, the first day of the opening of schools. So we had to prioritize the education system to ensure that all of our schools had water and thank God, there was no school that was not able to open on the first day of school as a result of not having a supply of water because we were able to respond to all of the requests by the Ministry of Education. I collaborated the entire weekend with the Minister of Education and we ensured that all of our schools had a supply of water. Our health institutions, our hospitals in Hoover, in, in San Fernando, we ensured that they had a good supply of water so that the operations there are not disrupted and people's health is placed at risk. So we have to ensure that all our hospitals, our healthcare facilities are supplied with water. And once all of these institutions are provided with water, then customers are now given the next level of priority to ensure that they get their supply of water. So to answer your question, it, 36 tankers being available to the authority it is certainly not able to meet the demands of customers when you have that level of disruption. So how do we, do, what, what can we do um, as we move forward to ensure that we don't have that level of disruption because certainly you don't have water trucks in the, company, in, in the country to provide 80,000 customers or so. So we have to look at the maintenance of our facilities to reduce the occurrence of disruptions that take place not only at the Desalcourt plant, but at the, the Karani water treatment plant and all, all other major installations across the country so that we reduce the levels of disruptions so that we will not have that kind of widespread disruption taking place. So far, we are on the cusp of um, rehabilitating all our pumps that have been down on all our booster stations, ensuring that we have standby pumps 
at all our booster stations and major um, water installations and water treatment plants, etc. Making sure that our transformers, we have standby transformers when they go down, etc. And we will continue to work with the Salcot and the management of the Salcot so that they can look at the maintenance of that facility as WASA is doing work on its end. The Salcot as a major stakeholder also has to step up to the table with WASA to look at how it executes its maintenance um, system to ensure that we do not have that level of disruption that we see happening um, over the last month or two. I remember you talking on the TTT Now Morning show a couple of months ago, and you spoke about the, the water racket of the Truck One service. Is that still happening and any clamp down on that? Yes, um, it, it is very difficult to, 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 to monitor these things, especially when they happen on a, ma on a manual basis. You're, you're operating um, outside of the digital space where you can monitor these things on a, on a real time basis. We are ensuring that all our trucks, uh, they, they have certain um, trackers so that we can monitor their operations. We can monitor where they're depositing water on a regular basis to clamp down on all of these things. Um, and, and so far, this project has been quite successful and we are seeing less incidents of racketeering that is taking place in the water sector. But you will be surprised to know that there are many private operators. They try to capitalize on some of these disruptions that take place. So a number of customers all over Trinidad and Tobago reported to me that they had to pay over $800 for 1,000 gallon of, of water, which I find is quite unfortunate, where you have private operators or even people within Wasa who use unfortunate crises um, like what we experienced recently to be able to extort monies from some of our customers. Um, so you, you just have to appeal to, to, to people to, and, and to operators, do not allow and do not utilize situations like these to extort monies from um, some of our domestic customers um, because you simply want to profit from situations like that. So I have received a lot of information and in order to respond to it, um, utilizing my ministerial power, I gave um, WASA policy directive that all our customers who are impacted by the dis disruption coming from the Salcot should be entitled to a free trop one supply of water, notwithstanding their financial standing with the authority. So there's a policy within the Water and Sewage Authority where customers who owe the utility company will not be qualified for a trop one supply of water. Many of our customers complained that they could not have reached the call center in order to place a request for their truck one supply of water. So we are also looking at the operations of our um, call center operations so that when we have these types of disruption, people and customers will not have difficulty in reaching the authority to request a truck one supply of water or to submit you know, a complaint that might be taking place on the distribution system. So before the end of the year, we are also, just like what we did for the new services division, of the Water and Sewage Authority, we will be making widespread changes to the operation of WASA's call center to ensure that customers 24 seven will have access to the authority and will not have the, the type of challenges that they are having, um, especially in recent times. So Minister, the, the TNT Met service would have issued a hot spell alert warning for a total of two weeks. How is this going to affect the utilities such as WASA and even TNT because we see a lot of people using more AC these days because of the heat we're experiencing. Yes, so this shows the, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago that we are exposed in so many ways in the utility sector because of the harsh realities of climate change, which is upon us. In the wet season, with excessive rainfalls, our plants are impacted by excessive rainfalls because of flooded um, river conditions, etc. And even when we experience dry conditions, as we are experiencing now, our impounding reservoirs are impacted significantly. So as we speak right now, and right before this interview, I received a, a, a report from the Met Services, Trinidad and Tobago, which is in fact advising that towards the end of, of this month, we will continue to experience dry and hot conditions. 
And as a result of that, our impounding reservoirs will be impacted. At the start of the rainy season, the reservoir was producing approximately 8 million gallons of water per day. And as a result of the dry conditions that we are already experiencing and which is projected to, con to continue towards the end of this month, we are curtailing production at the Hollis Reservoir by a million gallons of water, meaning that the reservoir will now be producing 7 million gallons of water per day, as opposed to 8 million gallons of water. So areas in Aruka, in um, Valencia, in, in Arima, they will see, and, or rather can see, an impact in their water supply as a result of the dry conditions that we are experiencing. So it, it, it is a good opportunity to remind citizens of Trinidad and Tobago that we are very vulnerable to climatic conditions, to dry conditions, as well as when we are having extreme and profound rainfall. The weather that we have and we experience, they do impact on our utility sector, because our utility sector, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but all around the world, they are very vulnerable to climatic conditions. And where TNT is concerned, of course, because of these dry conditions, people utilize a lot of um, air condition to keep themselves cool, to keep their offices cool, their schools, etc. So th there is a high consumption of electricity. And as a result of that, it means that we are utilizing more natural gas in order to produce electricity. So we are seeing the cascading effect that climate change is having on the utility sector. And again, we are ad advising um, citizens where we can conserve electricity because the more consumption of electricity, it means that we are burning a lot of our natural gas in order to produce electricity. So it is in fact having a negative impact on TNTech because TNTech will now require more natural gas in order to produce cheap electricity so that we can keep ourselves cool. And where WASA is concerned, it is already having a negative um, impact on our impounding reservoirs to the extent now that the utility company cannot pro, uh, produce the, the volumes of water it expects to produce in the height of a rainy season um, because of the dry conditions that we're experiencing. And again, we ask our citizens to practice conservation where that is possible. You've always spoken a great deal about the transformation of Wasa and you're not know, saying it's already taking place, but you know, given that the transformation is expected to bring about a greater efficiency and so on, um, are we seeing that yet? We are seeing um, signs of the transformation. As a matter of fact, um, we have transformation taking place at all levels. So you have organizational transformation, which would see a new executive leadership that would breed a new culture within the organization where workers and all employees are committed to improving the working culture to ensure that it is more productive. And as a result of that, citizens will see uh, um, an improvement in the levels of service at, at the Water and Sewage Authority at various levels, all right? Um, and of course, the, the improvement in the supply of water. But as we go through the organizational transformation, very soon we will be making announcements with respect to the, the new executive leadership and the leadership of the organization because we believe that the leadership is very, very key towards the transformation of any organization as we seek to foster that new culture within the organization. So very soon, We'll be hearing a lot about that in, in the national media. And of course, I expect a lot of conversation to be generated as a result of that. But as we, as we do that, that is being led by the Board of Commissioners and I await um, their final report. But as we do that, we, uh, we, we recognize that transformation for the people of Trinidad and Tobago, the vast majority of people of Trinidad and Tobago, um, evidence of it will be in their supply of water. So over the last two years, under the Community Water Improvement Program, um, as a result of some of the changes that we have made in how we provide oversight and management of these projects, we saw uh, a vast improvement in ways in which projects are properly executed and managed. So over the last two years, we were able to successfully complete 60 projects in communities across Trinidad and Tobago. 60, it has never happened in the history of the, the Water and Sewage Authority, where 60 projects have been completed over the space of two years, resulting in an improvement in the supply of water to over 180,000 citizens spanned all over Trinidad and Tobago. And as a result of that, we are seeking to replicate that and double it or triple it 
over the next year so that many communities in Tobago, in North Trinidad, Central, South Trinidad, will see community-oriented projects designed specifically to respond to the water challenges in these specific communities that we're going to be rolling out the, the, this program so that citizens can get water and see an improvement in the supply of water. And under this program, a number of communities which have fallen outside of the water distribution grid received water for the very first time. So that is an example of the kind of transformation that is already on the way that is resulting in an improvement in the supply of water. Another evidence of the transformation um, is the successful desilting of the Hillsborough Dam. This project was discussed in the Tobago space for over 25 years, I'm told, by some of the elderly folks in Tobago, that um, there is a plan to desilt the Hillsborough Dam. And for one reason or the other, this project could not have gotten off the ground so that it can be made a reality. Over the last two years, we were able to not only start, but successfully complete the desilting of the Hillsborough Dam. As a result of that, there almost half of Tobago has already seen an improvement in their supply of water. But not only that, but the, the state and the Water and Sewage Authority was able to save over $10 million in cost savings because it was originally estimated to cost $80 million. And we were able to successfully complete that project somewhere to the tune of $70 million, saving the taxpayers over $10 million. So, so far, at this point in time, the water supply situation in Tobago has been significantly improved, not only as a result of the, the successful desilting of that dam, but we were able to do a lot of infrastructure work, the construction of booster stations, about four booster stations in Tobago, in Chauvin Road, in uh, Hope, um, Cut Hill, and some of those areas, uh, we constructed new booster stations. We were able to lay down new pipelines. We uh, installed a 7.4 kilometer pipeline, 16 inch kil kilometer pipeline from Signal Hill, Tobago into um, the, the western portion um, of Tobago down to the airport. All of these projects, this particular project was completed in just 45 days. An example of the transformation that is already taking place where citizens are now getting value for money and improvement in their water supply. And the last but certainly not, not least, the new services division of um, the Water and Sewage Authority, which is the division that is responsible for processing building applications, um, plumbing certificates, etc. That um, division was completely restructured because in the past, a lot of people, customers, commercial, industrial customers who submitted applications for plumbing and for building, it took them over five years for these applications to be um, completed. As a result of the restructuring of that unit, we were able to install a new automated WASA e-utility um, platform through DevelopTT, where the entire process is digitized and citizens can now interface with the utility company um, on a digital platform to expedite the application process, thereby resulting in that application process from um, taking a timeline of over five years. And these things are now happening within 120 days. All right. This is contributing billions of dollars in revenue and investment to the economy in Trinidad and Tobago. And it, is a, it has already resulted in um, an improvement in the financial standing um, of the Water and Sewage Authority. So in the coming months, we will be hearing more on the organizational restructuring, the restructuring of the leadership of the authority. And all of that that we are doing are all geared towards improving the levels of service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, the financial year is coming to an end. Are you able to identify any projects you've undertaken in the last fiscal that you were able to achieve in the ministry? Well, certainly. So the, the first thing that stands out to me is the Community Water Improvement Program, which is a program under the, um, the, consolidated, um, the Consolidated Fund um, of, the, of the, the Public Sector Investment Program. And we were able to, um, to, to, to get funding to the tune of 30 
million dollars um, during this current financial year. And um, as a result of that, completed a number of projects all over Trinidad and Tobago, constructing new community, new um, booster stations, I'm sorry, um, new pipeline in high leakage pipeline areas across Trinidad and Tobago. We were able to construct new booster stations, for example, in Aruka, in Tunapuna, in, in Maraval. We rehabilitated a number of booster stations across the country. We were able to put down new pipelines in Matura, in Sangri Grandi, um, parts of central Trinidad, um, Brickfield, for example, and some other areas in central Trinidad, in Pinal, in Maruga. We, um, Tobago, we, 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 we were able to install about three new booster stations um, in Tobago. So over 100,000 people, residents, spanning all over Trinidad and Tobago, um, were able to see an improvement in their supply of water as a result of the successful execution and management of the community water improvement program. As it relates to the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, we were able to commission the 220 kilovolt major transmission line at Gandhi Village, which would now take additional power from the TGU facility onto the national grid, thereby adding that level of robustness to the electricity grid and reducing the chances of national blackout, which we experienced a couple of years ago. This project started about two or three years ago, and we successfully completed the project in May of this year. And um, I, I can tell you and report to the national community that TNTEC is in a far better place now, more than ever, to be able to manage the possibility of national blackouts. As it relates to waste management, waste in Trinidad and Tobago and the way in which we manage waste is a critical part of how we treat our environment and the risk that um, our citizens are exposed to in the manner in which we, um, we manage our waste. The Ministry of Public Utilities was able to complete three or four waste management policies and integrated waste management policy for Trinidad and Tobago, the very first in the history of this country, we were able to complete that. The recycling policy, a policy for the restructuring of the solid waste management company of Trinidad and Tobago into a corporation. A beverage container policy, which is, complete, which is before the cabinet right now. And we expect for all of these policies to come out of cabinet um, before the end of this month where as we move into the new financial year, we will be moving into a new era of how we manage waste at our major landfills across the country and having a comprehensive recycling policy to protect our environment. So these are some of the, the key things that we have done uh, over the last year. And um, a couple months ago, we were able to host the first water loss conference in the entire Caribbean. Most of these conferences are hosted in Europe, in North America, in Central and South America. It was never hosted in the Caribbean. And Trinidad and Tobago earlier this year hosted the first water loss conference, which attracted over 300 delegates from around the world coming and journeying to our shores in Hilton, Trinidad, and Port of Spain to um, share ideas as to how we manage this very, very precious resource of water um, sharing their learnings, their skills. You see um, technocrats, uh, engineers coming here and exchanging information and supporting that, the work that we have done and we are doing in the water sector. I tell you, everyone in the Caribbean, we are, we are very excited with the transformation that is taking place and we expect to have another such conference in Port of Spain because um, of the work that we continue to do in the water sector. So this year has been very encouraging. We did a lot of work in, in the transformation in the water sector. We, we are strengthening um, the national grid where TNTEC is concerned with the commissioning of that 220 kilovolt um, circuit at Gandhi Village. We have completed our waste management policies, which would see a new era in waste management in Trinidad and Tobago, which includes as well the, um, the new beverage container um, legislative policy um, and, and, and free legislative framework 
and um, and we will continue as well and very important we sign off on that idb loan program to the tune of 80 million us dollars which will be pumped into the water sector uh, to further improve the supply of water so we have signed off on, on that we completed conditions precedent and within the next month we'll be receiving our first tranche of disbursement from the inter-american development bank which will be utilized to improve the water structure and, and water infrastructure all across Trinidad and Tobago benefiting over 700,000 citizens. So a lot is taking place and the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago can look forward to greater things happening in 2024. I know you would have mentioned um, extracting groundwater or the aquifers. How is that progressing? That is progressing quite well. As a matter of fact, in 2023, this current financial year, we were able to successfully drill 10 um, groundwater wells in East Trinidad, parts of Central Trinidad, and in South Trinidad. In the coming weeks, uh, we will be commissioning three new wells in the Freeport area, which would add 1 million gallons of water to the people of Freeport and surrounding areas, improving their supply of water from getting water once from a cycle of one once every nine days, and they will move closer to a 24-3 or 24-4 supply of water. Under the IDB program, we will, we will be drilling three additional wells, uh, which will bring a total of seven wells in the Freeport area um, and approximately two million gallons of water. We will be upgrading the Freeport water treatment plant and surrounding areas in Calcutta and all of those areas that are experiencing an irregular supply of water will see a dramatic improvement in the supply of water. We are in the tender phase for the drilling of three wells in the Mayaro area. Um, in the Palo Seco area, we also will be seeking to commence the drilling of 10 wells in the Palo Seco area, Palo Seco area improving the supply of water to 30,000 people who live in Palo Seco. In Tobago, we have successfully drilled three wells in the Mary's Hill area, which will give the people of Tobago approximately 1 million gallons of water additionally to what they are experiencing right now, thereby allowing the authority to move water from a water-rich area to a water stretch area from Mary's Hill to the Hillsborough um, zone. All of these things are set to happen before the end of this um, calendar year. So our well drilling program is well on the way and those wells that we have successfully drilled, um, thousands of um, communities are already seeing an improvement in their supply of water. So my constituency, for example, in the Five Rivers area, are already benefiting from three wells that we drill in the Payaco area, adding 500,000 gallons of water. And in areas in, um, in Aruka, in, in Maloney, in, um, in Five Rivers, and the upper ends of Five Rivers, like Manimo and, um, and some of those areas, they're already seeing um, a consistent supply of water as a result of the successful drilling of um, the wells in the Payaco area. So it has been a very successful program and because of the successes that we have experienced over the last year, we will be ramping up the production and the drilling of wells in 2024. So areas that I've mentioned in Cedras, in Ikakas, Mayaro, Moruga, and, um, and parts of Tobago, Central Trinidad, Penal, um, Clark Road, um, Separia, all of these areas we have already identified for a robust well drilling program. There's the issue of state agencies owing utility companies hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, as we look into fiscal 2023, 24, how do you foresee this going to reduce that debt to Tiantec and even TSTT? The, the Ministry of Finance um, is reporting an improvement in our economic conditions. Numbers that we are seeing from the central bank, as well as from international rating agencies, they're all showing that our economic conditions in Trinidad and Tobago um, is improving significantly. Um, we are ramping up activities in our energy sector, in our pet chem sector, where the government's revenue position is also improving. Um, we, we, we are coming out of the throes of the COVID pandemic where hundreds of millions of dollars were spent in the health sector to save lives, to provide support to people who lost their jobs, 
to um, provide rent relief to businesses that lost their, their, um, their way during this pandemic. So the government, over the last two years and three years, spent hundreds of millions of dollars to assist citizens of various categories during this pandemic. And as a result of that, we would have seen a number of state agencies not paying their utility bills, WASA and TNTEC, as well as TSTT. Because we are now seeing an improvement in our economic conditions and we are no longer spending large sums of money in the health sector as a result of the, the pandemic, I am, I am pleased to report that we are already seeing um, a number of state agencies, as well as ministries, making a greater effort to settle their outstanding arrears to TNTEC, WASA, and TSTT. So as we improve our economic conditions, as we see an improvement in our revenue positions, um, that will redound in state agencies settling their outstanding arrears to our utility companies, and the Ministry of Public Utilities continue to work alongside all our fellow sister brother uh, ministries and the PS is in contact with the management of state agencies to ensure that the, the monies that they receive in the national budget, that they ensure that they settle their outstanding arrears to a utility company. So I look forward to a better performance where that is concerned in 2024. I hear of people complaining about not receiving a water supply and still having to pay WASA. What would you say to that, or even to possibly put a meter on? So if they don't receive the water, they don't pay. Is that a possibility? And that is the direction that we have to go, because metering will ensure that these things don't happen. With metering, you pay for what you receive. And if you are on a schedule supply, you pay for what you receive. You pay for not for what you consume. And if you, for one reason or the other, don't get the supply, then the meter will be empirical evidence that you did not receive the, 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 the supply of water. So to address that, in addition to a lot of the work that we are doing to improve the supply of water, the drilling of wells, the, um, the installation of packaged water treatment plants in key areas across the country, the refurbishment of some of our major plants, all of these things are geared towards ensuring that those same customers get a supply of water but to ensure that you pay for what you receive and or what you consume, the next phase, of course, will be looking at how we introduce metering, especially on the domestic front, to ensure that a level of equity takes place in the way that our resource is, is managed, where water is, is managed. So, um, so customers, I want to assure them that yes, I understand it because our billing is not based on a metered system, and this can only be resolved by introducing metering at the appropriate time when there's a supply of water for all of our impacted communities. And this is the direction in which the government is going, ensuring that we have a consistent and a reliable supply. And once that is achieved, then we introduce metering to ensure that you pay for what in fact you receive. As we begin to wrap up, tell us about some of the success stories, some of the challenges, that you would have experienced in the last fiscal? So the success story is, is that um, we were able to complete a number of um, policies that will drive the and improve the utility sector in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I mentioned the, the policies on the, the solid waste sector. Um, I'm very happy that we were able to complete that. I'm also very happy that we were able to complete an integrated water resource management policy for Trinidad and Tobago to manage this resource for the next um, 10 or 20 years. Um, we were able to complete a number of projects under the Community Water Improvement pro um, Program, uh, benefiting over 180,000 citizens. We were able to successfully sign off on a loan with the IDB in the first tranche of 80 million US dollars meeting conditions precedent, because once you get money from the IDB, you have to meet a number of certain of criteria um, doing um, consultations across the board, making sure that you meet your, um, your procurement policies, etc., putting together your project execution units, not only in WASA, but the Ministry of Public Utilities. All of these things are conditions precedent that if you don't meet them, you will not be entitled to get the, the funding that you sign up to. And we were able to do that long before, about a month before the deadline date. And as a result of that, it means that 
um, we will be able to pursue all of these projects in the water sector um, in, the coming, in the coming months. But 2024 is going to be a very um, interesting year in the water sector where all of these projects are going to be rolled out. They will be continued and um, communities all over will see an improvement in the supply of water. As it relates to challenges, the issue of climate change is real and it is impacting the utility sector in Trinidad and Tobago. The extreme rainfall that we experience, um, our plants, especially in East Trinidad, have never been designed to treat the level of turbidity that we see in the water. Our pipelines are being disrupted because of earth movements taking place, especially in Central and East Trinidad. A lot of pipeline disruptions take place because of the moving and saturated earth it has never happened. The extent has never happened in the past. So huge sums of money will now have to be spent on replacing some of these aged um, infrastructure to be able to meet and to respond um, to the ravages of climate change. And now in the middle of a, a, a dry, of rainy season, we are experiencing a long hot spell, which is already threatening the levels at our dams and reservoirs. And that's the reason why we have to look for alternative supply of water so that when we experience what we are experiencing right now, there will be um, an additional supply of water to be able to manage the shortfall out of these things. So climate change is real. Climate change is posing um, some significant challenges. And in order to, uh, to ensure that our utility companies, WASA, TNTEC, TSTT are positioned to be able to respond to the challenges posed by climate change, it requires expenditure of hundreds of millions of dollars to ensure that your infrastructure can withstand the, the ravages of climate change. We are experiencing it right now, and we ask our citizens to do what they can in these very, very challenging circumstances. And our behavior will have to be adjusted. How we manage our water resource conservation, how we treat our environment, how we utilize and consume electricity, conservation, all of these things are critical. The more electricity that we use, if we don't take off the lights, if we don't regulate the, the way in which we utilize our air condition, it means that we have to expend more volumes of gas from our natural resource, monies that gas, that precious resource that can be utilized to extract revenues and raise more revenues to improve our, our economic circumstances will no longer be there because you're now utilizing it to generate electricity. So these are some serious challenges that we face as a country, and therefore we have to change the way in which we do business. The business model that we survived on over the last 50 years cannot be the business model that is going to take us into the next 20 years. We have to make some wholesale changes as we have done over the last two years. We will continue to do. But as citizens, we have our role to play because we have to now adjust our behavior in the way that we treat our environment. And once we adjust our behavior, then the impact of climate change will not be far reaching as we are experiencing at this point in time. Minister Gonzalez, I know you've been on Delving Deeper a number of times already. I want to thank you again for coming and joining us on the show. Thank you very much. I'm certainly sure that it is not going to be the last time that I'll be um, appearing on Delving Deeper because we have a lot more coming, uh, a lot more will be happening in 2024. On a programming note, there will be no Delving Deeper on Republic Day due to the live coverage of the National Awards. Join us again on October 2nd for another episode of Delving Deeper. I am Sonolala and on behalf of the entire crew, have a great night.